Major General Arnold Punaro spent a career in the military and in Congress as a Senate Armed Services Committee staff director and knows defense budgets in and out. Defense News' Joe Gould recently spoke to Punaro about current budget challenges. Arnold Punaro, welcome to the program. Great to join you. Um, so we have a budget from President Biden, but it came late and Congress has a crowded agenda. Uh, where do we stand right now and what could it mean for the Defense Department? In presidential transition years, we're always going to be running late, running slow. But I will tell you, it's as backed up as I've ever seen it uh, with all the various authorizations, appropriations, budget resolutions, infrastructure bills, and things that have got to get passed here in the next couple of months. My instinct is that if you look at the administration's priorities, certainly infrastructure and their jobs bills and other things, have a much higher priority in terms of the sequences of the legislative process than do our typical defense bills. So regrettably, I think we're looking at the defense bills, both authorization and appropriations, being delayed and getting done if they get done between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we're gonna probably be running right up to the time where we're hanging our Christmas stockings and trying to figure out whether we're gonna get from the Pentagon budget, sugar plums or coal. <laughs> So the, the, um, the authorization bill is the massive defense policy bill, which passes out of the Armed Services Committee and in, in, in Congress every year. The, um, the appropriations bills, are those are the spending bills. That's the actual budget. And when those don't pass uh, at the end of the fiscal year, you get CRs, as you noted, a stopgap um, continuing resolution to keep the government open. Um, is a government shutdown uh, possible? The continuing resolution is going to be bad enough because it doesn't allow the department to change their priorities, to focus on the new technologies that are in the FY22 budget and things like that. Uh, I think the crystal ball in July is still too cloudy to predict what's going to happen in September. It's a debt ceiling year, so the debt ceiling has brought us chaos in the past, you will recall well. The worst thing you could do from a good government standpoint, a national good security standpoint, is a shutdown and nobody always says they want one, but we've ended up with them in the past. So is it a possibility? It always is a possibility. Is it likely? I certainly hope not, but it's too early to tell how all this is gonna play out because there's, there's so much you know, stirring around. There's not a clear path to see how you fix all these issues in the short period of time between now and one October. I, I want to ask you about um, budget and policy, but I but let me take a, a, a detour into um, nominees. Um, some of President Biden's nominees for the Pentagon, um, like Frank Kendall. What, what can you tell us about the issues around Frank Kendall's nomination, and what do you think we can expect? Well, Joe, let me talk about the big picture first, and then get to the specifics that you ask about. Since the Kennedy administration, the time it takes for an administration, a president to recruit and vet and then send a nomination to the Senate and for the Senate to consider that nomination, that timeline has been increasing every year under every administration from the Kennedy era when it was a matter of months to where it's almost a matter of almost a year now uh, before you get the bulk of your major nominations through the system. The holes that people have alluded to about Frank Kendall, who by the way has been confirmed by the Senate twice before for senior Pentagon positions, it's not about him personally. People are trying to leverage his nomination uh, to basically the Michigan senators, for example, are upset because a base in Michigan is losing their A-10s. They were hoping to get a backfill of the Joint Strike Fighter International training. That's gone to Arkansas. They're thinking, OK, maybe if we hold up Frank Kendall, we'll get the Air Force to commit. Um, and we've got a couple others. Senator Warren has announced that she's concerned about the recusal process, although the nominees that are on the calendar agree to every single one of the laws, rules, regulations required of nominees. She'd just like for them to go further. Back on uh, budget and policy, there are always fights every year, as, um, as you and I have discussed many uh, over the years. Um, what do you see as the top one or two confrontations brewing right now, um, either on the uh, appropriations or, or authorization bills? I would say on the appropriation side, it's going to be the amounts for domestic discretionary and defense discretionary. Uh, for example, um, the House Defense Subcommittee, which has already marked up their bill, they'll go to full committee when they get back. So the top line for domestic discretionary and defense 
will be a knockdown slugfest in both the House and the Senate. Then on the policy side in the defense authorization bill, it will be all about major policy. You've got the issue of changing the Uniform Code of Military Justice to deal with sexual assaults. You've got the commission in the Pentagon. They'll have a recommendation. You have Senator Gillibrand has a bill uh, that goes farther than the Pentagon's recommendations. Some of the conservatives are very concerned about what they consider people going too far in terms of some of the social issues in the Pentagon. So as always, words are a lot harder than money, even though the money is going to be very hard this year as well. Well, let, let me ask you this. Do, do you see any momentum around um, any of the kinds of defense reforms that, um, that you're talking about, whether it be the, you know, the way the budget is crafted um, or, or anything along those lines? Uh, uh, supply chain issues have gotten a lot of um, momentum in, in, in terms of the competition with China. Uh, what do you, what do you uh, think we can expect? I do, and the reason is just what you mentioned. You, you brought out China. I think as we come out of Afghanistan, we're at a major inflection point for our national security. Again, we've been there for 20 years. They built their military back. There's bipartisan agreement in Congress that China is the pacing threat and we need to do something about it. You've got legislation moving in both bodies that relate to that. The Pentagon gets it, the new administration gets it. So you have a consensus that we have a huge problem that we've got to change. And to get more bang for the buck for the dollars we spend, you've got to have these major reforms. You've got to get at these massive defense agencies. There's hundreds of thousands of people, hundreds of billions of dollars tied up in these rear uh, echelon type organizations that can, and many of them are big businesses. The DLA does more business with the Department of Defense than our largest defense contractor, Lockheed Martin, that it's not susceptible to world-class business practices we see in the modern world. So there's ample room for reform. We also have got to go after these emerging technologies. We want to focus on those technologies that are key for our country's economy, not just defense, microelectronics, artificial intelligence, autonomy, hypersonics, all those things that 5G that are key. And there's a compelling case for reform. You're right to be skeptical because a lot of people have talked a good game here and we haven't seen the kind of progress we'd like to see 27 chapters in my new book, 500 pages, and that's what it's all about. All the changes we need to make in the Congress, in the Pentagon, in the Office of Management Budget, in the National Security Council to basically deal with the world uh, and our economy uh, as we need to in the decade ahead. All right. Well, uh, General Panaro, it is always a pleasure to speak with you. I really appreciate your uh, many years of experience and your perspective. Thank you for uh, bringing it to the program today. Always a privilege to be with you. We start our industry headlines with some major technology news. The Pentagon canceled its $10 billion Jedi cloud computing contract with Microsoft, which had been challenged by Amazon Web Services. The Department of Defense said in an announcement that with the shifting technology environment, the long delayed contract no longer meets the Pentagon's needs. In its announcement of the Jedi cancellation, the department also announced a replacement cloud called the Joint Warfighter Cloud Capability. The department said that the government intends to seek proposals from limited sources, namely Microsoft and Amazon Web Services. Raytheon Technologies will get up to $2 billion to develop the U.S. Air Force's long-range standoff weapon system, a new nuclear-capable air-launched cruise missile that will be carried by B-52 and B-21 bombers. On July 1st, the service awarded Raytheon a deal for the engineering and manufacturing development stage of the LRSO program with contract options that max out at about $2 billion. And that's it for industry news. When we return, personal finance expert Jeanette Mack has banking tips for military families.